you just take us through, obviously, Jimbo's not even close to naming a starting quarterback or anything, so I'm not going to ask you about that. But just what have you learned about these two guys? What, in what ways has Nick Starkle and Kellamon impressed you out there? Well, right they've there? both been a pleasure to work with. Uh, from day one, uh, as you know, um, our whole offense and pretty much our whole program is under a total transition uh, period here. And, and the offensive style of play that we're putting in place um, has been – you know, um, a, a huge transition for these guys, a huge adjustment, so to speak, and they've attacked it. Um, they have gone about their business on a daily basis. We could not be more pleased with the effort, the attitude uh, of the guys we have in that quarterback room. Um, and there's competition, there's no doubt, and that's healthy. Um, both of them and, and the rest of the guys in that room have come in and had some good days, had some bad days. You know, this is a pro-style offense. Um, the quarterback is in control of most everything that's going on. Um, Coach Vischer's the best teacher of this style of system in the country, uh, and he has been for a long time. Uh, this offense produces great numbers, but at the same time, it wins. So, you know, there's some things that the quarterbacks probably are learning here as far as uh, having to check running plays. Uh, so we can get in the best blocking scheme based on the defense, check protection so that we can pick some things up. And so these guys, we've been very pleased with their progress. Um, there's great competition, as I already said. And the guys in, in, in our room, we feel like are capable of doing um, the things that are required in this offense. And, you know, um, we'll probably have competition throughout the season. And um, when, when all those things um, um, need to be addressed. The who's going to take the first snap? Coach Fisher will have that, but you know I don't think we're to that point yet. We're just out there installing, coaching. They're learning, seeing, and um, and so far we've been pleased with that that progress. Got Sam Khan here in the middle. Uh, Sam Khan, ESPN.com. Yes, Darrell, What what are some of the biggest differentiators in this offensive style to maybe what is trendy, for lack of a better term, in college football? Um, you know, this has become a – obviously, college football is a more offensive game these days than it used to be. The rules are allowing the offensive teams to score more points, make more big plays. Um, people have spread out more and made you defend the entire film uh, – the entire field. This offense does a little bit of that, that we make you defend the entire field. But we do it – we're a mixture of – some old school philosophies and principles. But let me just say this, Coach Fisher has always been on the forefront of what's going on in college football. He was doing RPOs at LSU. Um, he had the ability to spread people out long before people were doing that. It's just that, um, in my opinion, he has maintained a win the game philosophy. There are a lot of offenses out there that are throwing up huge numbers and their teams aren't winning. And, you know, there are some great offenses out there that are scoring a lot of points, racking up a lot of yards, and they are winning. And that's the thing I've always admired about Coach Fisher's offense is that they move the ball, they score the points, they can run the ball, throw the ball, but not at the sake of leaving the defense out on the field all day. So um, that's our style. Our style is to try put ourselves in the best play, down in and down out, running the ball, and throwing the ball to be able to attack a defense in both areas. Um, and so that's our style. And, and I think it also fits the culture that uh, we're trying to implement here, the hard-nosed, disciplined, uh, physical type of play. And, and, you know, our guys have taken to it. They're, they're, they're liking it. Um, early on, it was very, very different for them. It's still a little bit different. But, um, you know, both sides of the ball, to be quite honest, are, are, are excited about being physical, being aggressive, and, and those are the things we want to continue to do. We'll go to Ben right here on the right, and then Suzanne. Uh, ben Baby with the Dallas Morning News. Yes, back, back when North Texas was winning uh, multiple Sun Belt titles, uh, y'all ran the ball a, a good amount. You were known for running the ball. Um, how much of what you were doing at Memphis when you were throwing, throwing, throwing it around a lot is what you want to do here, and how much did Coach Fisher want to implement that stuff at Memphis here? Well, you know, obviously we're going to run Coach Fisher's offense, and it's a great offense. There are some things that, you know, I've done in my past, but some of them I stole from him. I mean, I've, I've gone to places and, and, and sat down and visited football with him. One of our best running plays, he was running back in the, 
I guess the 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 LSU days, and I went and visited him for two days and took one play, and it was a huge play that helped us have two guys lead the nation in uh, in in uh, rushing yardage. Um, so, you know um, what we're doing style wise, um, and I guess the best way to sum it up, you know, at Memphis, you know. We weren't just a throwing team. We had good numbers, but we, we ran the ball well, too. And I think the thing that we did there, you know, we were fast break football. I mean, we were trying to snap the ball as fast as humanly possible all the time. I think here, what Coach Fisher wants, and I wholeheartedly agree, is we want to control the tempo. We want to be able to go fast when we want to go fast. We want to go at a normal pace that keeps the defense off balance because we don't huddle. And then we also want to slow the tempo down when we feel like doing it. And, and to be honest, the people that did that probably the best last year was Central Florida. Central Florida did a really good job of managing their tempos. Um, at Memphis, we, we were getting to where we managed it a little bit more. But, yeah, we were fast break, um, go as fast as you can. And sometimes when you're doing that, and I'm just looking at the two things objectively, you live with some bad plays. You, you, you're running plays so fast, you get in, and all of a sudden the defense jumps up, and they're in a little bit of a better situation than you are, and, and we don't want to be in that. We want to make sure we're in the best play possible for our personnel versus what the defense is lining up in every play imag imaginable. And, and doing that with a little bit of tempo, uh, some ability to – to um, to you know read the defense as the play develops in your RPO game and your drop back passing game same things uh, those are the things we want to do and again it's all goes back to our original philosophy of we want to control the game offensively the tempo of the game and be able to run and throw equally well and put ourselves in position to win as many games as possible Suzanne on your right and then we'll finish with Zach and Travis. Yes, sir. I might have to combine your your question. Hey, Suzanne Halliburton, Austin American Statesman, yes, kind of on what Ben was talking about. When Jimbo hired you, what did he maybe want to steal from what you were running at Memphis? Because you all did have the fourth best, I believe, fourth or fifth best offensive team in the country last year. And are you going to sit in the press box? As of right plays? now, I believe I will be upstairs. Uh, feeding coach information, letting him know what I see from up there. Um, you know, we talked before I came here, and he said there's some things that we had been doing that he would want to look at. And then when we got here and talked about it, a lot of it were, oh, yeah, we did that in uh, the 80s with Damian at Auburn. And, oh, yeah, we did that at um, LSU. So most of this stuff, you know, he's done. Um, some of it he'd gotten away from. So, you know, we're meshing some things that we did. But he's, he was familiar with all of these things. You know, Coach watches football. He watches games. He has an unbelievable memory for numbers and can remember a play from a game 15, 20 years ago, what quarter it was in, what hash it was on, and we'll pull it up on film, and it's exactly what he said. So, you know, um, our offense is taking what he's been doing his whole life and doing what he's done his whole life, which is each year in – tweaking it a little bit based on his personnel, based on what defenses are doing to people at the time. You know, when when um, when zone blitzes became a big thing a number of years ago, Coach Fisher was attacking those better than anybody with RPOs, bubble screens, four verticals, things like that. It's just you're constantly on offense seeing what the other team is doing and trying to figure out what's the best way to attack it. So. Um, so far, it's been great, and um, you know, and, and it's and I'm uh, really honored to be here and, and 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 learn under him. To be quite honest, it's a good situation. We have time for one more. So. Okay, two more. <laughs> Coach Zach Taylor, sixteen twenty WTAW. You talked about the physicality of your offense. How much of that starts with the offensive line, and what have you seen from those guys this fall? Well, we've been pleased with the progress they've made. You know, linemen, if you ask them, they'd rather come off the ball, hit a guy in the mouth, roll their hips, drive their feet, get what we call a pancake block, than, you know, set in uh, um, protection a large majority of the game because the only time they get on TV then is when they give up a sack and everybody goes back and John Madden diagnoses, you know, where their feet were wrong and all that. And so, you know, I think they enjoy that more, but you have to be able to do both. And I think the other thing is 
We want to be physical up front, but we're running more running plays than they've run in the past here. And I think our guys like it. Our guys like to pull. They like to trap. They like to kick guys out. They like to get good angles. And that's where Coach Fisher, you know, a lot of people think Coach Fisher, great offensive mind, so he knows the passing game. He knows the running game. Uh, as strongly as he does the passing game. And we've got a fabulous offensive line coach, Jim Turner, that's coached in a lot of different systems. So that group, to be quite honest, from day one to now, has really come together as well as any group on our offense, possibly on our team. And they're taken to the physical part of it. They're understanding the schemes. And, and we feel pretty solid about our front guys. Close it out, Travis. Travis Brown at the Eagle newspaper. Uh, what have you seen from Kwame Etway that's moved him into the number two spot? And is there a different mentality you get from a walk-on player who gets uh, pushed in that position? Well, I have a spot in my heart for walk-ons. At, at North Texas, we had a bunch of them that ended up playing for us. Um, at Memphis, the same thing. We had some guys that became you know, great. The guy that caught the touchdown pass for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the other night, Alan Cross, was a walk-on at Memphis, and he was a four-year starter at tight end. Um, I think those guys are extremely hungry, and um, Etwe is no, no different. He works every day. He's very, very intelligent, and he has football ability. He can make those between-the-tackle quick cuts and then get back vertical extremely well. And that is a key in any offense, but especially in ours. On top of that, he's powerful enough that – the first defender is not going to knock him off his feet. He can bounce off people. And again, he, he, he likes to make his cut and get back vertical. So we're excited that he's here with us and he's going to pay, play a huge role in what we do this year.